at the twilight's last glance through the pair of watched were so gallant the bones bursting that our flag was angled banner yet we Still get Craig Biggio up here as well. But uh, the Astros here uh, trying to close out a game six of the 2022 a World Series. It'll be a from Valdez going up against Zach Wheeler. And Astros fans are hopeful they're going to see something they did not see back in 2019. And that's their Astros closing out of the World Series and making two World Series championships in the last six years as we re-welcome in uh, Lauren Gardner here and Lauren first off uh, give me the plan that Dusty has uh, lined out here for Framber Valdez making his second start this World Series. Well Fred I think he's just hoping that he can go deep once again but in the case that he doesn't he did express some concern in the usage yesterday and yesterday's media availability over Presley and Montero. I did talk to him during BP and he said he liked the fact that they did have the day of rest. Now when I spoke with him he had yet to have the official meeting for the game plan but he did say he might want to lean on Ryan Stanek in that position if possible but was pretty positive that everyone would be available. Now back to Framber Valdez and those quality starts. He set an MLB record of 25 this season. So of course a handful of players today going into this game six contest were wearing those just to support their left and a look at uh, Presley Montero and a standing shots there as well. All right, so a look now from the other side, Lauren. Let's talk about the Phillies and what's their plan of attack? Because last time they saw him, it was all Valdez, six and a third innings, nine strikeouts. He ate him up. Yeah, it was really difficult for this Phillies lineup to face the lefty. It was a sinker and it was the curve. I did have a good chat with Kevin Long as his team was stretching. They were calm. They seemed confident and very just like certain. I, I can't really put my finger on the tone that I felt during this conversation. Of course, he was very optimistic about his team's chances against the lefty and saying that, listen, we got some work in on the curveball machine earlier today around 2.30. It's something they've been doing that Kyle Schwarber brought over around early June when there was a managerial change. He said that definitely helped. And he said, listen, our approach at the plate is very similar to what Gene Zagura just told me in the interview that you saw earlier. They're going to be aggressive, sitting fastball. He was also talking about the curve. He said that's probably the most dangerous ball, but that's usually a ball throughout the course of those at bats. He also said that. Um, those you should, those are something that they have to look for. Now the sinker, he said, those don't move quite as much. Now I did have a conversation with Alec Bohm as well, who told me, listen, we have faced a lot of good pitching throughout the course of the regular season in our division alone. It's just another guy. We are confident this thing is going to seven. Lauren Garner, great kind of X's and O's here, in the Phillies and the Astros uh, before Game Six. We're bringing back here on the main set. All right, guys. Uh, so we're going to need have have to have a big performance from a big bopper if the Phillies are going to see if they can uh, take Game Six here and force a Game Seven. And when you look at the lineups, all eyes yonder. They zero in on one of the faces of the game. Uh, Bryce Harper, who came to this team four years ago for $330 million and already has the franchise here looking for their third World Series championship in franchise history. They're two games away, but they need a couple of big performances left out of them. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think when you look at Bryce Harper and what he means to the Philadelphia Phillies, he's got to come to play and he's got to have a big game in game six. And now I think we're going to start with the history of who he is and what he's done right in 2019 signed that big 13 year 330 million dollar contract and the Philly fans were all in they said if they could take us to the promised land Bryce Harper needs to be that guy and he certainly has done that in his first year in 2021 won that MVP award and really came to play every single day kind of set the standard and the tone for who the Phillies were going to be had the cool shoes going wins the Louisville slugger in 2021 but absolutely has been a menace since he's put that uniform on and in 2022 he was he, it felt like he was out playing for something more than just whatever he's done with his accolades in the past and in June 25 missed 52 games getting hit by Blake Snell's fastball right there and that was a big big blow for the Phillies he understood 
understood how much it meant to them. He understood the stress, the division that they were playing in. But man, when he was healthy and he was stepping up in the big bright lights of the of the playoffs, he has come to play. NLDS game three, he'll let you know who he is. He has been able to do that. He he welcomes the moment, he welcomes the time, and it's just been an absolute treat to watch every single day. He took down my Padres literally single-handedly with him and Schwarber, <laughs> and it was just amazing to watch. In bigger moments, he stepped up and he wanted to produce for his fans and that team. I look for him to do those big things today in the postseason. We know when he gets going and when he's doing his thing, more than not, the Phillies are going on to a big lead and usually they're winning those games so Bryce Harper is going to come clutch how many chances will he have how many opportunities will he have I don't necessarily know I think Valdez and the Houston Astros have clearly highlighted him to say you've had enough you've done your party now it's kind of our time to to do our thing yeah it's almost as if uh, the, the baseball gods are saying Harper, you know, they're right behind him. So the story that they want to write is right there. And I think Framer Valdez, the Astros, know this. So they know they have to avoid him. However, he's going to go up there with a very clear plan, hunting his pitches, because as he goes, the Phillies go. It's contagious when he gets that big hit. Everybody else follows suit. And the other thing, too, Yonder, and we talk about it. And Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Crowd starting to file in here down at the Bitter Bay Park in downtown Houston. It was a gorgeous day here uh, today, high in the low 70s. Roof is closed tonight here uh, for game six. And first pitch is uh, just over uh, 35 minutes or so away uh, for game six. It's on Fox at 803 Eastern. Joe Davis and John Spoltz on the call. Dusty Baker now on what a game six victory would mean. It'd be his first career World Series championship. You no, know, my routine's not any different. You know, the emotions are definitely there and, and definitely there on both sides. You know, I mean, we're trying to close it out and they're trying to remain alive. And so, yeah, I mean, their you know, emotions are running high today, but you've got to try to remain as, um, as calm, you know, as you can. You know, you can waste emotion early because we got three or four hours for the game starts. You know what I mean? You only got so much emotion, so you got to kind of calm it, and uh, the closer the game gets, and closer than I mean, me personally, my son asks me all the time, Dad, are you excited yet? And I tell him, not yet. And then he knows what answer he's going to get because I try to save it until the national anthem, who's ever singing the national anthem, then that's when it gets to his, put, his peak. Well, for my money, it's the best story. Uh, coming into the World Series and heading out, we'll see what happens. Can Dusty Baker get that uh, long-awaited uh, first career World Series championship as a manager? How about that 2,093 career regular season victories here? And that's like ninth or eighth all time. 50 and 46 in the postseason, and obviously he's had some issues in these winner-take-all games and lost 10 straight potential series clinching games in 2003 to 2017. But that changed. And let's talk about uh, some of the good stuff that Dusty Baker has been involved in, guys, as well. He's the only manager to take five different franchises uh, to the postseason. Think about that. Every organization where he's managed, they've gone to the playoffs. Obviously, a lot of people spent a lot of time thinking about what happened in 2002. They were up 5-0 in game six as a, a manager of the Giants. But this guy yonder is a baseball lifer, and now he has an opportunity to dot the eye on his yeah, career. Listen, we're talking about a guy that, that created the, the, the high five. <laughs> I mean, that's how long this guy has been in the game. You're not joking, by the way, either. No, I'm not yeah. joking. This, fact. This, this, yeah, it's a fact. And, and I think <laughs> when you talk about who this guy is, there's not one guy that will talk bad about him. And, and knowing him and being able to play for him was an absolute honor because you know this is a guy that from day one took me in a guy that that made me feel welcome a guy that even as, as, as a 22 year old made me feel like a veteran uh, no you knew how to how to respect the game how to respect the veterans but understood and kind of showed me the way he would bring me into the office on any given day he would talk to me during games kind of teach me the ropes and teach, teach me the little tricks and listen there's not one bad guy that would say anything about this guy he, there's not one bad thing I mean this is a guy from the grace of like Joey Votto to say I love this man this man he has done everything for me he has helped me become 
become the man that I am, there is no greater feeling than these players and what they're playing for because a lot of them can say, yeah, we're playing for the city, yeah, we're playing for, for the, the, the team and what, what that means, the name on your back. But I guarantee you these guys are playing for Dusty Baker. Uh, absolutely. Look, there's something to be said about a leader that gets the best out of his resources, right? In, in whatever endeavor it is, or whatever business industry. Well, in baseball is, can I manage personalities? Can I get the best out of the talent that I have in that clubhouse? Dusty Baker has been able to do so. Can I pick them up when they need to be picked up? So this goes well beyond just getting uh, some statistics and making decisions in the crunch because a lot of that stuff is already written down and yep. he's gonna, right. you know, he's gonna have to distill all that info and make the right choice. But it's more important to make sure that you get the best out of the players that you have under your tutelage. He's done so. He's taken his last seven teams, last playoffs. Usually when a manager has that sort of, uh, you know, pedigree on his resume, it's obviously with one team, not this guy. He's had to be oh. three different teams. The Astros, you know, and, and then the, the, the Nationals, and then the Reds. He's, so he's had to get uh, continually get opportunities after he's had great success. That's why Dusty has so many people rooting for him. Real quick, we just saw Martin Maldonado heading out down there to loosen up there for Amber Valdez. All right, we're going to get your predictions later in the show. But just final thoughts, Buzz, what you feel here. Uh, Astros going into game six, Phillies as well. Yeah, it just, it, it really feels 15 like, seconds like, a, like a welcoming party for Dusty Baker, right? It just feels like this is for the 25 years or the years that he's been playing, the years that that his family and everybody that supported him. It, it just feels like a New Year's. Like like everybody's excited for this. Everybody's tuning in not only for the game, but for the history of both of these managers, Rob Thompson and Dusty Baker. They clearly have reached a, a different level. I love what he's doing. Well, yeah, Astros trying to wrap it up right now in Game Six, and I know for Dusty it would be just music to his ears. All right, you got uh, fans young and old in the house, and they're fired up. They want to see a world. Series championship. When we come back on MLB tonight, we'll check in with Adnan Burke and Anthony Recker and Yonder Carlos and myself will be back later on with Orbit. To the main stage, you find yourself just one win away from capturing a World Series ring and on home field for the first time since the 2013 Red Sox. What do you think this would mean to the fans here in Houston? I mean, it would mean a lot. You know, we, we've been here uh, quite a lot. You know, the past six years, I think we've been here four times. You know, but we know we have a great team. You know, we got the necessary pieces to make it happen. This year has been a special year, and uh, we want to cap it off with, uh, you know, the ultimate goal, which is to win the World Series. Special year for you in particular. Big shoes to fill in Carlos Correa. And you came out and you got the job done. The LCS MVP you picked up right where you left off. Game five in one of the toughest environments to play baseball in. You flashed the leather and you were part of all three runs. How do you keep such a low heart rate? Hey, shout out to my teammates. You know, they're the ones that keep me cool. You know, they, uh, they've they been here before. So they know what it takes, you know. And they, they have a calm to them that... Yeah kind of just rubs off on you you know everyone just shows up knowing what the goal is which is to win the day win, win the game and uh, we just prepare trust the preparation and have fun you know go out and compete before I let you go what's the key to capturing this title here tonight just keep playing our game you know keep playing the game we've been playing all year you know play clean baseball and uh, competing you know good at bats and good defense appreciate your time Jeremy best of luck thank you LG and Red doing fantastic. Wait, Pena, marry me. Hey, listen, you got to shoot lots of love and adulation. And Zach Wheeler hoping to dominate for Philadelphia tonight. Had a terrific regular season and trying to force a game seven. We'll hear from the Phillies manager, Rob Thompson, when we come back. Don't go anywhere. You're watching MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Bourbon. Game six is coming up at the top of the hour on Fox. Zach Wheeler trying to force a game seven. His manager, Rob Thompson, on the game plan. All that stuff always helps, you know. It's it's really gets down to the fact that you just got to go out and play your own game and, and stay within yourself and, and just slow it down. What happens, happens. But... What tends to happen is people try to do too much because your back's against the wall. I just got to go out and play. I'm not one side or the other. I just see what I see and then, and then react to it. And we've got a full bullpen. We should have Ranger tonight. We might have Nola tonight for an inning if we needed it. I think you just react to what I see. You know, velocity, stuff, how the ball's coming off their bats, you know, and then just move on. I said all along about our club in September, the September swoon and... I said, you know, that's, that was a hump to get over, so maybe that this could be the same thing.
Rob Thompson, he has been so key to this Phillies team this year, and so has Framber Valdez. He earned the victory in game two, allowed one run in six and a third innings with nine strikeouts, trying to make his manager a World Series winning manager for the first time ever. First pitch, 8.03 Eastern on Fox. We're coming back with more right after this.